Okay, so today with me here, I have this tiny, tiny single board computer called the Redacta Zero. And in this video, we will be reviewing it and taking a closer look at what this board can do. But first, today's sponsor. PCB Way, do you have a board like the Redaxa Zero that you're just wanting to implement into a custom project, but you don't have the hardware to create your own PCB prototypes? Well, PCB Way has you covered. PCB Way will allow you to create custom PCB prototypes, flexible PCBs, PCB assemblies, CNC, 3D printing, and much more. All you gotta do is configure it with the different settings. For example, with PCB prototypes, enter the dimensions that you want, enter the quantity, configure the additional settings, and you can be quoted a price and shipped right to your door. This website truly looks like a geek's favorite place to hide. Like, let's say you have some special 3D CAD files that you would just love to print, but you can't afford a 3D printer. Just throw it at PCB Way and have them do it for you, very affordably. Now, back to the video. So let's start out with the Redaxa Zero specs. So first of all, the Redaxa Zero is packing a quad core 64 bit A53 CPU, which is a 12 nanometer CPU. As for the GPU, we have the Mali G31 MP2 GPU. And according to some, that GPU is even better than the Raspberry Pi 4, which is an interesting claim. As for the RAM, we have LPDDR4 memory, and this can go all the way from 512 megabytes up to 4 gigs of RAM, which I have 4 gigs of RAM on my model right here. Then we also do have an EMMC module, but this EMC module is soldered on onto this board, meaning that you can't pull this off. It is connected to this board. And then as for display output, we have micro HDMI, just like the Raspberry Pi 4 has, but on this board, we only have one. You can get this board either with Wi-Fi 4 and Bluetooth 4 or Wi-Fi 5 and Bluetooth 5. So there are different variants of this board. And we have a USB 2.0 Type-C OTG port and we have a USB 3.0 Type-C host. And there are 40 GPI, GPI pin hosts, meaning there aren't the pins in it, but there are the holes for the GPIO pins and we also do have an SD card reader right here on the board which can be used to run operating systems. And my model right here has a has 4 gigs of RAM and a 16 gigabyte EMMC module soldered onto it. However, you can pick this board up in many different configurations like I mentioned before and you can purchase this from different sites which I, which I will leave it down below. But yeah, so overall this board is packing a lot in it for being such a small form factor basically the same size as the raspberry pi zero 2w but it has much more power considering that that board only has 512 megabytes of ram and the redax zero you can get all the way to four gigs of ram a four core cpu and maybe even a more powerful gpu than the raspberry pi 4 and so that is really awesome as for the supported operating systems on the Redaxa Zero, we have the pre-installed Android 9 that comes on the EMMC, which is kind of a strange version of Android 9. There is no Google Play installed, and I will showcase it a little bit later. And you can also run Ubuntu 20.04, 20 Debian Buster, and there are some other third-party operating systems such as Manjaro and Twister OS, which I will also be showing Twister OS in a little bit. Honestly, for not being a Raspberry Pi though, this board has quite a bit of support because I know it's a common thing to hear that other boards other than the Raspberry Pi Pis don't have much software support but this board seems to really have quite a few operating systems that you can run you can just go through their website and see all of these third-party and official operating systems that can run on this board as for connecting to this board you're going to need some type of USB-C dongle if you want to connect USB devices to this board such as a mouse and keyboard or a USB drive I tried the B-Link expand in that I reviewed in this video right here but sadly it doesn't seem to work with the Redax Zero, just like it did not work with the Raspberry Pi 4. Thankfully, I have this other USB-C dongle right here that seems to work just fine. I just plug it into that USB-C OTG port and I can get mouse and keyboard access just fine. As for power input, I'm using the official Raspberry Pi Type-C cable right here, but this board doesn't need so much power. So basically anything probably should do the job just fine. 
So enough talking and let's jump straight into the pre-included Android interface that came on my EMMC module. There are other Android variants on their websites, like there is a Lineage OS third-party build, but I haven't tested that one yet. I am just going with the one that came on the board and then after that we'll take a look at Twister OS to get a feel for how Linux looks and performs on the Redaxa Zero. So here we are on the Android experience on the Redaxa Zero, and chances are if you buy the Redaxa Zero, this is, is what's going to come pre-installed on the EMMC drive of your Redaxa Zero. So as you can see, it looks it looks a little bit strange, and if we go over to see which version of Android this is, we can go over to settings if I can find it. So when you go to settings, it starts to look like an Android TV, which definitely is a little bit strange, honestly. So this seems like a mix of Android TV and normal Android. It's a little bit strange, but we are on Android 9 right here, as you can see, and we have the 4.9.113 kernel. So that is what version of Android we're using. And, you and I'm using a mouse and keyboard, so it's not the most optimized for this experience, but overall it will do the job. So first of all, let's head into Geekbench 5 and see what type of score we get when we run Geekbench. So I just ran Geekbench 5 on the Redaxa Zero, and as you can see, these are my scores. So we got 127 for single core and a 428 for multi-core score. So this obviously isn't a performance monster, but it's okay. And it did take quite a while to run this Geekbench 5 thing. And I will say that I am not using cooling and my Redaxa Zero doesn't feel extremely hot, which is pretty awesome. So that is our Geekbench scores right here. So I wanna go back and take a look at Ida64 to see what it says about our system. So we'll open up Ida64 and our screen resolution is 1920. But here we are guys. So we have the Droid Logic Manufacturer. This is something that I thought was really interesting. You know, I said that I have four gigs of RAM. Well, Ida64 and System C both only report that I have two gigs of RAM. But when I boot into Linux, I do have the full-fledged four gigs of RAM that I'm supposed to have. So I don't know if Android just isn't using two gigs of my RAM or if both these apps are just reporting incorrectly. It is definitely a strange thing, but that's all I can really say. I mean, it's a little bit strange. And I did try asking on the Discord server, but I didn't get so much help as of now. Yeah, so that is basically it for here. If we go to thermals right here, I do not have any cooling and I'm just running at 42. So this board, I mean, I guess you could put a heatsink on here if you really do want to, but it isn't gonna affect it too much. Like this thing doesn't seem to be overheating that much. So overall, this seems like a pretty cool little board. Oh, an ad. That's one thing about this board. There isn't, or on this version of Android, there isn't like close and open buttons on the bottom right here which makes it a little hard to navigate but overall let's jump straight into some game testing to see how real racing 3 performs on this board so here I am in Real Racing 3, and as you can see, it seems to be running all right on this board. I mean, it's not the best performance in the graphics, like it seems a little bit stuttery, honestly, but I don't play this game that much, so I'm not sure how the normal thing is supposed to be. But overall, I would say that this is playable, but I mean, a controller or something like that would be much better than trying to do it like I am with a mouse and keyboard. So that's Real Racing 3. So here's another game that I got working on the Redaxa Zero, and this is Hill Climb, Hill Climb Racing. Definitely not a heavy game at all, as you can see it runs totally fine, incredibly playable on this board. But I just wanted to show you guys that for basic Android games, the Redaxa Zero is just going to do just fine, and you're going to be able to play most simple Android games. And that's about it for what games I'm going to be testing. I did try to run Asphalt 9, but because of the limitation of not having Google Play on this board, it won't work. Like, it, like I get in there and it says that you can't run this without Google Play Store as you're going to see right here. It's not going to run without Google Play services. That's why I, I had to substitute and install Aptoid by myself, which is kind of, it's just a collection of different APK files, which works okay, but you are going to miss out on those Google apps such as YouTube, right? If I try to open it, it's going to say it's not going to work because you, it's just not going to work since there aren't those Google services which are needed to run YouTube. So the next best thing that we can do is going to go over to Firefox, which I installed through Aptoid. There is a pre-included web browser on here, but Firefox just seems to be a little bit better in my opinion. So here we can go to Big Buck Bunny and 
test out some YouTube video playback inside of the browser. So we'll be running this at 720p normal speed and then we'll go stats for nerds as well and we'll try to make it big right here like that all right so right here we're running this at 720p 30 frames as you can see right here and you know this board is doing an amazing job we're not skipping any frames this is much better performance than you get in the raspberry pi in most operating systems which i mean it's not a surprise these like i've heard that these boards seem to tend, tend to run android pretty well and to watch 720p video on this board you're going to be just fine as for 1080p i haven't tested it but it probably would be okay but if you're fine with watching 720p this board is going to be a blast with watching 720p video you're not going to have any issues whatsoever so if, as for web browsing this board should do just fine as well so like we could search for basically anything and this keyboard right here i actually installed myself there was a different uglier keyboard before and i just installed the gboard from aptoid and it seems to work all right so here like we could go buy a raspberry pi and you know it loads up all right we can scroll and everything like that and it's it's not the greatest experience it's not the worst experience it seems to be pretty snappy and everything like that so i wouldn't say that there's too much to worry about honestly with this board so i mean this is basically the android experience it's not the greatest but it will work and i would be interested in testing out that lineage os that is available for the board as well but overall and I did like go ahead and install the Nova 7 launcher because you know the interface is kind of ugly just to give it a little bit of a better experience so you can definitely go ahead and change from that default experience and there are more apps in here that I didn't go through but that's about it for the Android side of things now let's head over to Twister OS which I will be booting from on an SD card on the Red Axis Zero and get a feel for how Linux performs on this board so here we are on Twister OS Armbian on the Redax Zero, and this is still on Beta 4, and it is based on Armbian, which is based on Ubuntu 20.04. And you actually just download this from their website and flash it to an SD card using a software like Balena Etcher, plug it into your Redax Zero, and it will automatically boot to the SD card. As far as I'm concerned, it boots to the SD card first, before going to the emmc module so you don't really have to do any additional setup you just download it and flash it and you should be good to use twister os on your red Axis zero so first of all the experience here is going to be pretty much just like you are going to get on the raspberry pi 4 like this is the windows 10 theme and it seems to be a pretty nice theme i mean i'm not going to go through everything but we do have the theme twister right here it doesn't have that nice graphical user interface that it does have on the raspberry pi 4 at least not yet but there is still stuff in here so there are 13 themes that you can choose from and that is quite a lot so i really haven't switched the themes yet and i'm not going to do that in this video but there is a lot that you can do with twister os and have a lot of beautiful pre-installed applications but first let's take a look at the terminal and see what neofetch says so neofetch right here so we are running armbian focal 21.08 and this is twister os armbian okay so here we go so we we are running the 5.12 kernel and this is xfc of course and our redax zero is at 1.5 gigahertz and we have four gigs of RAM, like I said right here. This Twister OS shows my full four gigs of RAM, unlike Android did. And if we type in HDARP right here, you can see right here that our CPU temp and GPU temps are just very low, 45. I mean, I guess it's average, so that's really good. I do not have any cooling on here. Everything seems to be running nice and cool, but of course, it would never hurt to throw heatsink on here, of course. And we, like I said, we are running Ubuntu 20.0.4 LTS. So that is really awesome. But for this video, I thought we'd just test out some web browsing and just see how the overall UI feels if you were going to use this as your own desktop. So like we click the file manager right here, the terminal. So in the file manager, we have all our files right here. And we all, oh, we actually have a RetroPie on here. Interesting. 
So yeah, we do have RetroPy right here that you could use to play emulation and stuff like that. And the pre-included web browser on here is Vivaldi, which honestly, Vivaldi seems a little bit slow for my taste. I mean, it, it just doesn't seem to be the best experience. I, yeah, so that's why I went ahead and I personally installed Chromium. And you may ask, how did I do this since it's not in Ubuntu repositories? So I actually installed the good old Pi apps. So yes, Pi apps it does work on this board too. It does not only work on the Raspberry Pi. I mean, there may be some compatibility issues when you are using this, but overall for me, it seemed to work just fine. And I was actually able to install Chromium through here. I'm pretty sure that I installed it through there. So there we have the Chromium web browser and we'll go ahead, try some YouTube video playback in here real fast and see how that goes. So you know how I said that Pi apps was working? Well, it doesn't seem to be launching right now, but I'm pretty sure that I did use it before and it's really strange that it's not launching right now. Maybe if I did a quick reboot, it would work too. But here we are guys, we have Big Buck Bunny open right here. This is gonna be at 720p and this is the 24 frames video. And as you can see, we're dropping 41, 41 out of 234 and we're not even in full screen so this is definitely a worse YouTube performance than we got in the Android experience which is kind of obvious Android does is supposed to work a little bit better I'm pretty sure so you mean I mean can you watch YouTube videos on here sure like right here let's see is it stuttery it does take a little bit to load between them. I mean, that could also be due to my internet not being the greatest, but I mean, it just doesn't seem to be the most best performance that you're gonna get. Like the Raspberry Pi might even be a little bit ahead of that. And when I'm in Chromium right now, as you can see, my mouse seems to be kind of flickery and it doesn't do that when I'm outside of Chromium, which is a little bit of strange, but yeah. So as for web browsing, I mean, it works okay. It's going to be all right, but overall, I do feel that the UI and everything feels a little bit worse than the Raspberry Pi 4. And you may be asking, why do you keep on saying the Raspberry Pi 4? Well, because this board is probably more likely to compare to the Raspberry Pi 4 than even the Raspberry Pi 0. So, I mean, that's what I've heard from some people. But overall, it seems like a pretty cool board. And yeah. So yeah guys, here we are, we come to the end, and you may ask, would you recommend buying the Redax Zero? And I would say if you're looking for a very tiny single board computer that does pack some impressive power, then the Redax Zero is going to be a good board. And this isn't too expensive either, you'll be able to pick these up for a very affordable price, and you don't have to buy 4 gigs of RAM if you're not going to use it. Like buy as much as you're going to need, and overall it's going to be a very nice experience. I mean, as desktop usage goes, it's probably not the best when using Linux, but you can run Android on this or even use this in some type of DIY project that you're going to be working on or something like that. This should be really nice for that. So I will be interested in testing this out maybe as a home server or if you want a deep dive comparison against another single board computer, even such as the Raspberry Pi 4, let me know in the comments below. Any questions also let me know and subscribe to the channel would be really awesome so thanks for watching